Welcome to Procedure Flow. We're excited to welcome you aboard and want you to get the best start possible. For users with viewer status, this short video will provide you some tips and tricks for how to use and navigate through Procedure Flow. So let's jump in. Getting around in Procedure Flow is super easy to do, but there's a few pieces of information that will help you a lot with this. First, you'll need access to Procedure Flow. Procedure Flow is an online tool and each user must have their own account. If you don't have an account yet, please contact your supervisor or Procedure Flow administrator to get one set up for you. Once you have your account, open your browser and navigate to app.proceduraflow.com. We recommend saving this page in your list of favorites or bookmarks. Just a quick note here that the preferred browsers that support Procedure Flow include Google Chrome, Microsoft Edge, and Mozilla Firefox. Use your email address and password to log into Procedure Flow and you'll land on the Entry Points page. In Procedure Flow, Entry Points are a collection of small hyperlinked flowcharts that have a unique set of members and roles. All the processes that pertain to a specific audience or that a specific group of people will need to use are generally housed within a single Entry Point. When you log into Procedure Flow, you will see the Entry Points that you've been granted access to containing your processes. Click on the applicable Entry Point to access it. Once you arrive in an entry point, you'll land on the home flow for that entry point. The flows that you'll be navigating through in Procedure Flow are made up of seven different shapes, and it's important to know what these shapes mean so that you'll know what to do when you see them. The action shape represents a direct action that you will have to take, such as clicking a link, asking a question, or advising the customer of something. The decision diamond represents a choice or a fork in the road and the path you follow depends on what situation you're presented with. The data shape represents information that you'll need to remember. It could be from your customer or from some other source. Either make a mental note of it or write it down. The backstory shape will give you additional information, examples, or ideas that will help you understand why you're doing something. These are used to provide additional context in the flows. The endpoint represents the end of a process. At this stage, you should have satisfied the customer's inquiry or completed whatever task the flow is describing. The critical shape represents something that is very important to the process, which, if ignored, could have a big impact on the business or your customer. So make sure you take extra care when you see this shape. And finally, there are also plain text shapes used in some flows, which are in the form of text on the background of the canvas without any shape around them at all. These are often used as headings to help organize menus and home flows. To navigate through the flows, it's as simple as following the arrows and moving through the decision points. If a subflow exists from a shape, you'll see that the text is underlined and when you hover over it, the cursor changes to a hand and the shape gets shaded. Just click on the shape to move down into the subflow. At the end of a subflow, you'll either see an endpoint shape, which means you've reached the end of the process, or you might also see an action shape which says, go back and continue. Go back and continue is a directive to click your browser's back button to return to the previous flow. There are also breadcrumbs across the top of the screen showing you the path you took to get to the flow you're at now. Another option to go back is to click on the previous flow name in the breadcrumbs. In both cases, you will return to the previous flow where you were before you accessed the subflow. When you come back out of a subflow, you'll see a yellow back glow that will immediately let you know where you returned from and it indicates where you need to continue on from as well. Once you've finished with the process you're doing, you can quickly navigate back to the home flow by clicking on the Flows button in the top menu bar. This will immediately jump you back to the home page and you can get ready to take your next call or perform your next task. For more advanced users, there are some other options when you quickly want to jump to a flow. You can use the Jump to Flow search box in the top left of your screen. Just enter a word or phrase that appears in either the title or in a shape of a flow that you're looking for. For example, if I search for the word flower, the flows where the word appears is displayed in the search results. Select it and boom, you'll be dropped right into that flow. And if it's a subflow that you use often, you can add it to your start flows list, which is a list of favorites or bookmarks. To do that, go to the flow that you would like to add and simply click the star to the left of the title and you'll see the flow add itself to your start list down the left side of your screen. One important note here is that although it's possible to jump directly to a flow by either searching for it or clicking on it from your list of starred flows, it's usually important, especially for new users, 
to understand how all the flows fit together and what the processes are from start to finish. So we recommend that new users or employees follow the flows by starting from the home flow and moving all the way through to the endpoints until they gain some experience and familiarity with the processes. This helps to ensure they don't miss any important steps or pieces of information while they're learning. As a business, your processes are always going to be changing and evolving. Procedure Flow is a fantastic tool for keeping everyone up to date on those changes. As changes are published in Procedure Flow, users will see change notifications appear as a green bubble beside the Change History button at the top of the screen. To see what the change is, click Change History. This brings the user to the list of all change history for this entry point. Any changes that you have not reviewed yet are called out with the green New bubble. Click the title of the new update. This will bring you to a page showing a side-by-side -side comparison of the old flow where the change is outlined in red and the new flow where the change is outlined in green. Down the left side of your screen, you'll see a complete list of all flows that were part of this update. This includes any flows that were modified, added, or deleted. You can click through each one to see exactly what has been changed in each individual flow. Pay attention to your change history and make sure you're reviewing each one as they come in so you're always fully up to date. Where do you go if you get stuck and need help? Your first stop should be Procedure Flow's knowledge base at help.procedureflow.com. The knowledge base is searchable and has an article on how to do just about everything. If you still can't find what you're looking for, please reach out directly to your team lead or supervisor for assistance, or you can reach out to us directly by emailing us at help at procedureflow.com. Thanks for watching, and we encourage you to review the other videos that are available for more Procedure Flow tips and tricks.